So a couple of days ago, I made a video about uh, an attack on the city of Donetsk. Basically, an artillery shell landed in the city. I made a video about it where I said something doesn't smell right here. I didn't have the time to analyze it. I have the time to analyze it now. A couple of things to start. I can't actually show you any of the videos and most of the pictures without blotting them out completely. If I did show the video and the pictures, YouTube would come down on me like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. And we don't want that. So the slides and some of the pictures are available on my website. You go to ryanmcbeth.com. You can download this whole slide deck. To start, this happened in the city of Donetsk. This is a city that is in Ukraine. And this city is currently behind enemy lines, and it is controlled by a uh, separatist group uh, called the Donetsk People's Republic. Uh, this group is aligned with Russia. They have militias, they have tanks, they have artillery pieces. Now, in my original video, I used traffic circles to geolocate the actual point of the attack. I found that point right here, right outside of a store. Now there's three videos that confirm this location. The first video is facing south to start. I confirmed that using Google Maps. That's the image on the right. This video kind of goes back and forth a little bit and shows different stuff around the crime scene. The second video is shell fragments that then pivot left to the store. So initially the camera's looking south and then it starts facing east. One thing to notice is that in the video, there is now a wrought iron fence that is missing in the old Google Street View. The Google Street View was taken 13 years ago, so things change, things get built. The fence is missing, but I think this is still the same location, mainly because of the green awning of the store. Third video is a vertical video, and this video pans around the scene and goes to a couple of locations and then ends looking south. We can confirm this is the same location using Google Street View by this white building. I think it might be some kind of security guard station. So let's go over some of the casualties that we find both in the videos and in pictures that were taken. First casualty is a man with a lost shoe. There's one picture of him looking west and one looking east in a video. The man with the lost shoe's blood trail grows. I think this is a good indicator that these particular bodies weren't staged because the blood trail grows from one video to the other. There's also a woman with a pocketbook and it is her torso only. In this particular picture, it's looking south. The woman's pocketbook disappears in the video. This is probably because someone took the pocketbook and looked through it to try to find identifying documents. There's also a dismembered hand looking north. This is just a picture. You don't see the dismembered hand in subsequent videos. There's a woman in a red shirt by a crosswalk near a store. Uh, there's one picture of her looking north and then one picture of her in a video looking south. Then we have some additional casualties near the store. Two of these casualties are just their torsos. One of those casualties is wearing a jacket, which is kind of odd because it was a nice day, but sometimes elderly people wear jackets even in the warm weather. The green wall confirms the location in Google Maps and in the video. There's also another body right next to the green wall looking southeast. This body is a complete uh, casualty, not just a torso. And you can confirm that from the bus bench, the green bus bench bracket that is sticking out of the wall of that building. Let's talk about the location of some of the casualties. There is the lost shoe casualty, which is in the middle of the street. This is the pocketbook casualty, which is just her torso. There is the woman with the red shirt, which is next to the store. There are three casualties by the store. Two of those are just their torsos. Uh, one is a complete corpse. And then there are two bodies in the side street. Let's do some point of impact analysis and crater analysis. A journalist named Eva K. Bartlett took a picture of the crater. The shell hit right outside the building, right near the door. There's extensive damage on the inside. Only torsos were found near the impact site. There's broken windows in the store across the street. This means the blast went forward. There's also broken windows in the red building. Normally when artillery hits, Blast goes forward and to the sides. Broken windows can be found in the brown building, again, to the side. So let's do some crater analysis. This comes directly from FM 6-50, which is an army field manual about artillery and finding points of impact. One thing to note, the detonation of a projectile causes an inner crater. The burst momentum of the shell carry the effect forward and to the sides, forming an arrow which points to the rear. That means there's gonna be more debris on the rear 
of an impact. And that will point all the way back to the gun. So if you look at the side splatter of the crater, the arrow of debris from the rear points south. This means the round came from DPR lines. So let's move on and I'm gonna prove to you why this round couldn't have come from Ukraine. <clears throat> there were some radio antennas to the Northeast. These radio antennas are great aiming points, but I'm not sure if radio towers played a role because I think they would be too far from the front lines to accurately see and aim off of. Other things to note, the street isn't cordoned off by police. Anybody can just walk up the street and walk into the crime scene. This car just drives right through the crime scene. This is not how you handle a crime scene, and this is going to become important later on at the end of this video. So let's talk about what kind of shell was used. We need to talk about kill radius first. For something like an M777 howitzer, it fires a 155 millimeter shell. This is a kill radius of 50 to 150 meters. So let's put this into perspective. This is a basketball court. So this would be 50 meters. This would be 150 meters. It doesn't even fit on the page. This is 50 meters on the map. This is 150 meters on the map. This is a 155 explosion. There would be a lot more damage than what we're seeing here. A Russian 152 shell would be roughly the same. So I think we can rule out 155 and 152 shells. That being said, I think we can rule out rockets like HIMARS or theater ballistic missiles like the Tuchka U for the same reason. There'd be so much more devastation. It wouldn't make a small crater. I also think we can rule out grad rockets because they are volley fire. It leaves 122 millimeter shells and 120 millimeter mortars. Now, according to intelligence sources, the DPR has about 35 D30 122 millimeter howitzers and maybe 720 millimeter mortars. And this is data as of 2020, so there may be more or less in the DPR. Ukraine has about 85 D30 122 millimeter howitzers and a lot of 120 millimeter mortars from the Soviet era and also including some that were donated from the UK. The max range of a Soviet era 120 millimeter mortar is 7.1 kilometers. So the only way this would work is if it was inside the DPR, is if literally the DPR fired on themselves. I don't think that was the case, at least not intentionally. But let's take a look at some shell fragments. Note that shell fragments may have been planted, but if they were picked up on scene, we can figure out what that shell was. So one large fragment has a tapered base. Probably isn't a 120 millimeter mortar. I mean, there might have been some deformation, but we've already proved if it was a 120 millimeter mortar, it would have had to have been fired from inside the DPR. It's most likely a 122 millimeter shell. If you take a look at the tapered base, it's a close match, but not exact. Maybe there was some deformation, but it's definitely not 155, 152, or 120. The D30 122 millimeter gun has a maximum range of 15.4 kilometers. So the round had to come from inside this circle. This is not propaganda. This is science. Russia uses your ignorance against you. Only one half of 1% of Americans join the military. So Russia has a 99.5% chance of fooling people who don't know how the military works. So how does artillery work? When you're on the attack, artillery is normally one thirds behind its max range on attack. So here's what this means. If the front is over here by this red icon with a 15 kilometer ranged gun, you're gonna be five kilometers to the rear. That way you can attack soldiers, you can attack bunkers that are at longer range. You can attack supply lines that are even further out. The location of Ukrainian gun at max range, if we're talking about one third max range attacking, is about five kilometers from the front here at max range. The max range is all farmland. There's no place to hide here. We could put a gun in this settlement. There would be better cover among the town and the suburbs. But the suburbs in town are too close to the front. This is way too close. The town is 2.76 kilometers away. 
the suburbs are 1.1 kilometers away from the front. You do not want your expensive artillery pieces that close to the front. That's how you get killed. But here's the other problem. The enemy gets a vote. Counter battery fire is deadly. Russia can detect incoming artillery with radar. It can also use drones to find and strike. So Russia can theoretically counter fire within five to seven minutes. If it's the DPR, it's probably going to take a little bit longer because they're not as well trained. I know that Ukraine has shelled the breakaway republics before the war started. I know that. A lot of people have written me and said, well, Ukraine has been shelling since 2014. I know. They've never had to deal with counter-battery fire. They've never had to worry about Soviet steel crashing down on them within five to seven minutes after they started their shenanigans. Shooting into a civilian area for fun is pants on head stupid. Why would Ukraine randomly shoot? All right, so let's do a pros and cons list here. There's some pros. You kill some random civilians. Okay, what are the cons? Spotted by radar, spotted by a drone, counter battery fire, loss of a gun, loss of personnel, loss of credibility with, with the West. That's a big one. Ukraine has to have the moral high ground because the second they lose credibility with the West, the war is over. So by now I'm sure you can see how crazy it would be for Ukraine to just randomly shell a city with no tactical value. So where would Russian 122 guns be? Somewhere in this circle. Now artillery is always going to be at least two thirds behind friendly lines when they're fighting defensively. They might even be further back. And the reason they do two thirds is that it keeps them away from any possible enemy attacks but it still allows them to shell the front line. It still allows them to hit targets of opportunity in the near rear of the enemy's lines. So where would the DPR have a one, two, two gun? It's gonna be at least two thirds to the rear. And I've found all of these possible places. But if you take away everything that isn't directly below Donetsk, you get this. Specifically this area, probably around here behind Donetsk or south of Donetsk. The most likely point of origin was one of these soccer fields. They crossed the traffic circle on the way to the front. One is only 1.37 kilometers away. The other is 2.5 kilometers away. What the heck happened? The most likely answer is a short round. A short round is where you intend to shoot a certain distance, but you shoot short. You don't shoot as far as you would like to shoot. And usually this happens because you didn't put enough propellant in the gun. Now, the 122 millimeter shell for the D30 has two types of charges. They have reduced charge and they have a full charge. Here's what I think happened. I think that the mission called for a full charge to reach all the way out to the front but they put in a reduced charge and the round fell short of its target by 11 kilometers. Accidents happen. Someone was careless, maybe someone was tired. The minimum range for a D30 howitzer is one kilometer. This matches the profile of the short round. The other evidence for a short round, no cordoning off for the crime scene. Why can cars just drive through the crime scene? It's probably because Russia already knew the point of origin. I don't think that Russia or the DPR intended to do this. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, you know what? I want to cause a short round today. But it happened. And it's a tragedy. But I can say with almost 100% certainty that Ukraine didn't do this. This was a short round from a 122 millimeter howitzer fired from below Donetsk. And those people were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Thank you for watching.